Hello, and welcome to a gloriously sunny afternoon here in San Francisco, California. Today, we'll be taking a ride on one of the city's famed cable cars. For those of you not familiar with the cable cars here in San Francisco, cable car in this instance refers to a system of trams or streetcars that are pulled by a cable as opposed to something like a gondola. Anyway, I'm currently at the Powell Street and Market Street stop which is the southern terminus of the Powell to Hyde line. At 2.1 miles or 3.4 kilometers long, this is the longest of San Francisco's cable car lines connecting downtown to the popular Fisherman's Wharf district. The trams here operate on 3 foot 6 inch tracks, so quite a bit narrower than the 4 foot 8 and a half of standard gauge. The gap in the middle of the track is where a grip attached to the bottom of the streetcar will attach to the cable and pull the tram along at a speed of 9.5 miles an hour or 13.3 kilometers an hour. And here comes our ride to Fisherman's Wharf just now. While many of the streetcars used date from as far back as the 1880s, our tram, which is number 21, was actually built entirely new by Muni, who are the operators of the San Francisco cable car, as well as much of the public transport network in San Francisco and it only entered service in 1992. While barely even 30 years old, I love that it still looks as old and antiquated as the original examples, and in fact I didn't even realise that it was essentially a replica until I was doing the research for this video. One cool feature of the San Francisco cable car, and something I've only ever seen here, is that the trams have to be turned around on a turntable after completing each service. Now, this has got me wondering, are there any other tram networks out there that still use this method to turn trams around? Be sure to leave a comment if you can think of any, as all the trams I've been on in Europe have either had cabs at both ends of the tram, or a turning circle at the ends of the lines. Anyway, time to hop on board and take a ride on the world's last manually operated cable car system. You can sit inside on these benches, or it's also possible to sit outside towards the front. However, I decided to sit here in hope of getting a good view out of the back. And we're off! The full length of the line will take about 22 minutes to cover. As we set off, we should probably have a look at our route for today. We'll initially head north on Powell Street, before turning and heading west on Jackson Street, as far as Hyde Street, before heading north once again to Fisherman's Wharf via Lombard Street. really doesn't take long for things to start to get very steep indeed, and this isn't even close to the steepest bit yet. <laughs> Off to the right just now we can see the Transamerica Pyramid, a staple piece of the San Francisco skyline, the 48 storey structure was, until recently, the tallest building in the city at 853 feet or 260 metres tall, although it has since been overtaken by the Salesforce Tower. 
I will say that it really doesn't take long for the cable car to get very busy. So if you want to guarantee a seat, I'd recommend getting on at the start of the tram's journey, if at all possible. Anyway, we now find ourselves passing through San Francisco's extensive Chinatown area. This is the oldest Chinatown in North America, as well as being one of the biggest. The time soon comes to leave Powell Street and head west on Jackson Street. Now, one of the great things about YouTube is that it's free. However, if you do want to support the channel in exchange for ad-free early access to videos, then be sure to check out my Patreon and channel members pages. A short time after joining Jackson Street, we turn once more, this time onto Hyde Street, where we'll remain for the rest of the journey. Probably our most notable stop is on Lombard Street, just at the top of where the famous curves are. The section between here and Leavenworth Street claims to be the most crooked street in the world. Now, while I highly doubt this, nonetheless it is still one of the city's best known tourist attractions. From Lombard Street, we enter the steepest section of the line as we descend towards Fisherman's Wharf. This section of the line has an incredible 21% gradient. I'm going to say, you certainly don't want the brakes to fail on this bit. Anyway, this has been an absolutely incredible experience. As soon as I realised I was going to be in San Francisco, I was certain to make time for a ride on one of these. So, if you're wondering about tickets, if you're just wanting a single, then these can be bought on board for $8, regardless of how far you're travelling. Now, needless to say, this is quite expensive, and they only accept cash on board. However, if you download the Muni app on your phone, a day pass is only a little bit more, at $13, and allows unlimited rides on the cable cars, as well as the Muni Metro and buses. So, taking a ride on a cable car is a must-do if you're ever in San Francisco. But what are your thoughts and opinions on the San Francisco cable car? Be sure to let me know in the comments below. The left side will be here, followed by straight ahead is all the wonderful restaurants we have. Please watch the step. On the way back, can we sit back? Yeah, sure. <laughs> Anyway, welcome to the Hyde Street and Beach Street stop, end of the Powell to Hyde line and located next to Fisherman's Wharf, as well as being in fairly close proximity to both Alcatraz and the Golden Gate Bridge. Now, be sure to let me know what you think of these tram videos in the comments below. They're good fun to make, so let me know perhaps what system you'd like to see covered next. However, in the meantime, I do hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, be sure to help us out by giving it a like. If you're new to the channel, then be sure to subscribe and enable notifications as I publish new trip reports every Friday. Thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you next Friday.